Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by ICOM. Heard it? Worked it? Logged it. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about ICOM radios. It's Ham Radio. Good evening, everyone. It's time for Ham Talk Live, episode number 261. CW kits and soldering services and who knows what else we'll talk about with Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. Recorded live on Thursday, June 17th, 2021. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight, we're joined by Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. And we'll take your calls live in just a few minutes. And don't forget, next week, make sure you have your last second field day questions ready to go. Uh, Paul Bork, N1SFE, will be here. He's the ARRL contest manager, and he will be here to take all of those tricky little field day questions that just come up all of a sudden right before field day starts. So uh, take advantage of that. Give us a call next week um, for your field day Q&A. Last week, we had Ward Silver in 0AX here to talk about the new release of Ham Radio for Dummies, and if you missed that show, you can listen anytime over at hamtalklive.com or on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube, or you can catch the rebroadcast over on WTWW, that's 5085 AM, Saturday afternoons at about 3.30 PM Eastern Time. So tonight we're talking kits and soldering and... Specifically, some CW kits, uh, although we do have some others. So get your questions ready to go for Joe. If you're listening to us live on Thursday night, you can give us a call after the interview by calling this number. And and beware, this is not the usual number. The phone system uh, decided to conk out on us a little bit ago. So uh, we're, we're going back with an old phone number. It's 812 812- Six three eight four two six one. Again, the phone number to call tonight is eight one two six three eight four two six one. And uh, you can also tweet us. It's at Ham Talk Live on Twitter. If you're on Spreaker, type into the chat and the comments there, and uh, those will pop up on the screen here. And I'll be back with Joe right after this word. From Tower Electronics, right here on Ham Talk Live. Thanks for choosing Tower Electronics. How may we help you today? We have PL 259s, we have in connectors, we have SMA adapters, we have VNC adapters. What can I show you today? Where's the tower? Well, we don't actually have a tower with us, but we have all kinds of things you can use with a tower. We have power poles, antennas, soldering irons and meters where's the tower (laughs) ma'am that's the name of our company we can't haul towers to all the ham fest across the country that we visit but we have almost every connector and adapter you would need to connect your antenna that's on your tower i don't think there's a tower back there i really don't tower electronics visit us at a ham fest near you or call 920-435-2973 or see our whole catalog at bl-259.com. Sorry, one thing we don't have is a tower. Who is the most dangerous person in the world? 
a ham with some wire, a potato gun, and an idea. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Tower Electronics will be at some ham fests. Yes, we've got some ham fests out there. Monroe, Michigan, June 20th, and Oak Creek, Wisconsin, July 10th. But you can visit them anytime at pl 259.com. Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB, is from Lincoln, Nebraska, and is well known for his kit building expertise. He joins us on the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and Hamcation line tonight. He is the longtime kit building editor at CQ Magazine and often makes presentations and offers kit builds at ham fests, conventions, and club meetings. He started in amateur radio at an early age, he's been licensed since 1969, and he's he's a, a, a Yasme Excellence Award winner, and he has that Dr. Seuss hat that you may see him with, but only at Dayton. So, Joe, welcome back. Well, thank you very much. And I tell you what, when you're talking about Hamfest starting up again, my first one since the pandemic is the Lincoln Ham Fest right here in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Lancaster Event Center, which is less than a mile from my house. And that is going to be on Saturday the 19th, which is only a short time away if we are listening live. And it's going to be great to be at a ham fest again. And I'm also looking forward to seeing everybody at every other ham fest I can make, especially Huntsville in August. Yeah, really looking forward to that. That's uh, probably going to be my first one. Um, I think there's one other one in August, but I think it's after Huntsville. So I think that's going to be uh, probably my first one uh, back um, of, of of substantial size anyway. So that, that'll be cool. Well, let's talk about some new kits. You, you've always got new kits on the horizon and um, you've got, uh, some that are, are CW based. So we'll talk about those and then, uh, maybe a little FT8 and, and, um, uh, and some Arduino stuff. So we've got a, got an assortment here. So, uh, first off, what do you have in the, in the CW world there, Joe? All right, Neil. Uh, one of them, it's, it's, uh, you can get this in single bands, anything from 80 to, I think, 17 meters. And uh, maybe 15 meters also. It's from QRP Labs. They're known for their QCX series of transceivers. And they have a QCX Mini. And this thing is barely bigger than a deck of cards. It's got a, if you buy it with the case, and I highly recommend that, uh, it has a very rugged, very strong case. And it is completely digitally synthesized. Now, this kit, uh, like a few other kits I've talked about in the past, is a hybrid kit. Now, what that means is there's a whole bunch of surface mount parts that are already mounted on the board. So you don't have to do any surface mount parts. And because of that, there are not very many resistors and capacitors and stuff that you have to put on the board, mostly electrolytics and things like that. So you're only going to be doing the through-hole parts, but you definitely have to wind those toroids that go on there. And it's got some interesting inputs and outputs. It's got a PTT line. Now, what that is, it's not to key it. It's so that it can key an amplifier. Uh, this CW transceiver, mine is on 40 meters. Uh, the PTT jack will key a amplifier. And there is an amplifier kit out there that puts out about 45 or 50 watts. It's got a CAT uh, jack. And what that is, is you can use that as a serial interface and hook that to your computer through serial port. And it complies, I think, with the Kenwood CAT standard. So you can use logging programs and things like that with this little pocket size CW transceiver. 
It has a paddle input that can also handle a straight key, and it has a headset jack, and it runs on 12 volts. Um, the neat thing about it is that it has the two-line LCD display that we're seeing very commonly now in a lot of kits, and the lower line of it is a CW decoder. So you can decode what you're getting. Now, you can also set up messages and stuff. So it'll do contest CQ messages. It's got RIT. It's got keyer control, all sorts of things, uh, and two VFOs. And you can switch the VFOs back and forth. And you can command those things to happen through the cat port. It's very interesting and not very expensive. I think it was around $100 for the the kit including shipping and uh you gotta be really careful putting this together because it's in tight quarters like i said a lot of stuff is surface mount in here so you really really got to be careful but uh i wouldn't recommend it obviously for a first time kit builder but uh uh, it's got things like pieces of circuit board that you break off from other pieces of it. and uh, But if you follow the instructions uh, precisely, you're going to get yourself a nice performing handheld basically size CW transceiver. And uh, it puts out, I think mine was putting out about 4.7 watts. So that's pretty close to the 5 watts that they talk about. And it's kind of fun to get it tuned in and watch it copying the CW while you're going along. Oh, now, wow, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. You just take it with you wherever yeah, you go. And so, so I, I like it. Uh, I have the full-size QCX that I'm going to put together more as a whisper beacon but it's also a CW transceiver as well. And so uh, actually you can make this one into a whisper beacon as well. So there's, there's all sorts of nifty things that it does. And for the money, the bang for the buck on this little QCX mini is, is hard to be beat with all the features they cram into it. So everybody said, you know, during the pandemic, kits are, are going to kind of become hard to come by. And some of them are because not because of the innovators that are designing them, but because some of the parts are getting much harder to get, especially through hole parts uh, and a lot of ICs, including surface mount ICs. So let's see. Let's talk about the next CW transceiver. Now, this is a brand new one that just hit the market on the 7th. And I was fortunate enough to get one a couple of days before. What this is, is it's the Pentec TR25. And this is a two-band 5-watt CW transceiver. Now, when I say 5 watts, uh, it gets more than that. I'm getting about 5, 5.5 watts out on... Uh, 20 and uh, almost 10 on 40 if I turn the power supply voltage up to 14. And it does allow that. I think it allows it to a little over 14 volts to come in. Um, but it is dual band, which means that you just flip a switch on the front panel and it changes from 20 to 40. Um, like the other kit I just mentioned, uh, it has a synthesizer in it as well, and uh, it is a uh, encoder, so you don't have a tuning capacitor. It is digitally synthesized, so it's going to be very, very stable. But it has no menus, okay? The QCX has a lot of menus and different functions. In fact, the QCX uses a built-in signal generator to do the alignment, which is really, really fascinating. I never had a kit that did that. Um, the Pentec does not. In fact, there are no menus on this. Instead, it's got five knobs on the front panel. One is obviously the, uh, the uh, tuning dial, which is actually an encoder. And then you have a keyer pot, which adjusts your uh, paddle speed. It has a TX power control, so you can turn it down to about zilch and all the way up to maximum RF output. Uh, it has an RF gain control for receive and, of course, a volume control. And somebody says, well, they all got to have a volume control. Well, the rock mites don't have volume controls. There's a lot of kits that don't have it. This one does. Uh, there are three LEDs, 
one of them blinks when the battery voltage goes down below a certain level. I have mine set to just below 9 volts. There's a blue signal LED that blinks while you're sending CW, and it blinks when it's receiving signals uh, to give you an idea how strong the signals are coming in. And it has an RIT uh, warning light that lets you know if you're in the RIT mode. Um, what's interesting about this is that it has two input jacks. It has a jack for a straight key and a separate one for paddles. And the neat part about that is, as opposed to the QCX where you're going through menus, you can just use either one. You can plug your straight key in and have a paddle plugged in and just interchange if you want. The display is pretty small. It's about an inch wide and about a half inch tall. And that sounds pretty small, and it really is. But it is an OLED screen. That's organic LED. It's not color, uh, but it does look kind of a bluish green. And it shows you your frequency, and there's a cursor under the number uh, for the uh, step size uh, that you're tuning. Uh, very, very, very low current draw and very, very easy to read. So uh, kind of a nifty little thing. Of course, it has a headset jack and uh, the BNC connector for the RF and the input is a standard coaxial power plug. But the uh, Pentec TR25, it's obviously bigger than the QCX, but it's it's very, very rugged and uh, has great receiver performance. Now, once again, it's a hybrid kit. That means that you have all the surface mount parts already mounted for you, and all you got to do is mount the other parts. Now, it's on two different circuit boards, and they kind of sandwich together. And on one of the boards, there's also some trimmer capacitors. But guess what? You don't have to tune those because uh, the manufacturer has a pin cushion. And I don't know if you know what a pin cushion is, but it's a special test bed where they attach the circuit board to it. And it has contacts that push up underneath. And it goes to a test jig. And then you just perform the alignment there. And now everything on that board is aligned and ready to go for uh, the rest of the components. Now, this one, uh, the QCX, I think, had four uh, toroids. This one has six toroids, including one transformer. The good thing is, is that the transformer, the two wires, the red and the green that are twisted together, are already twisted for you. But there's there's a lot more to this kit than just uh, what it does once it's put together. The assembly of it is really, really nifty. And I've never had a kit do this. But they, they give you three strips that are clear plastic uh, strips that have parts in little pouches that are heat sealed in order that you're going to be using them. So instead of sorting out the parts, and I lecture a lot, as you know, about sorting parts, but this one, I take the scissors and I cut open a pouch and I put in the parts according to the steps and the instructions. So uh, kind of like when I do the stage-by-stage -stage kits and when you've finished one stage, uh, you can leave your parts sealed up in the container you sorted them in. Well, this you don't have to sort it. You can put the, the strips back in, a, in the cardboard box it came in because the parts aren't going to leak out unless you cut open that pouch. So it's it's really nifty. And it's, uh, it's labeled the upper board, the lower board, and the final assembly parts. And so it's really, really slick. Um, like I said, the parts are already sorted for you, already checked, everything. All you do is I, I just took a scissors and I would just cut each one open as I go. Uh, put the parts on my uh, uh, work surface and put that uh, set of parts on the board. And then I go to the next. So, Neil, Very that nice. is uh, the CW kits. Yeah, it sounds like some uh, some cool stuff. At, at any time I hear Joe Eisenberg say, I've never had a kit do this before. 
it, it kind of kind of grabs your interest. <laughs> I'm glad I, I like to see these kind of innovations by the, the yeah. kit makers and and John he, he does a really, really good job on these and uh um I sent it to him for him to look at and test to make sure I did everything correctly and and of course it was uh good with flying colors and I I really think uh, that this one is probably easier than the QCX to put together, but I also would not call this a beginner's kit. This would be more for an intermediate kit builder who's already wound toroids and worked with boards that have surface mount parts on them, but you don't have to solder them, but you got to work around them. Because once again, if you drip a little drip of solder on one of those ICs, it's got like 10... 10 uh, strips right, right next to the parts you're working on, you, you can have problems. So uh, I would say this would be more for the intermediate kit builder. But for somebody who's going to take it out on field day, it has a four-pole crystal filter that's centered on 7 hertz, uh, correction, 700 hertz, and uh, is 300 hertz wide and very, very selective. Well, there you go. Some cool stuff. Well, we're, we've got a couple more kits, uh, but I think we're going to hold those until after the the break here. Uh, but another thing that we want to talk about tonight is, um, is soldering surfaces. Now, the reason this comes comes up, and, and as this does often happen on Ham Talk Live, uh, I run into something and. I say, hey, Joe, what do you think about this? And, and, this, and this was one of those things that just happened to come up. And so I thought, like, okay, let, well, let's ask Joe on the show about this one because we're, we're getting ready for this, this big kit build at Yoda Camp here in a few weeks. And, and all of a sudden, everybody kind of looked around and goes, uh, what tables are we going to use for this? And I'm like, uh... I don't know. I thought there were tables. So, uh, we want, we want to get some, some surfaces for these beginning kit builders to use for soldering. So I started looking at these silicone mat things and, and, you know, laminate and, and all these different things. And then I said, you know, let's just ask Joe. So Joe, <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you the the inexpensive and very effective solution. Now, there's two of them that I use quite often, uh, and I have to uh, put this caution, and that is uh, in the retail environment we are in right now, that sometimes these things are not available for one reason or another. I I used to be able to say, oh, yeah, you can go to the store. They always have these things. Well, as we know now, you can go to the store and things that you always thought would be there aren't there. But we'll hope that these are. Uh, two places I go. One is Walmart, and they sell under their Mainstays brand. Uh, they have a set of three different sizes of cookie sheet uh, that are all bundled together, and it's six bucks. And you can't beat it. Uh, three uh, good size cookie sheets, and they're not coated. They don't have that nonstick coating or anything. Uh, but they're reasonably heavy enough metal that it's going to protect your surface. So if you've got like those fold out plastic tables like you get at Sam's Club or Costco, it's going to protect that surface. So all those hot solder blobs and things like that are going to end up in that tray, as well as most of your clippings and stuff like that. And because they have a lip around them, uh, the parts aren't going to roll off the table. So uh, if it's a small enough kit, uh, like we were talking about something pretty simple, um, you can actually just sort your parts along the back edge of the cookie sheet. And that works. Now, if you want to get even less expensive, I have a Dollar Tree about six blocks from me. And they sell a cookie sheet that has a lip around it for, of course, a dollar. And so uh, those work just as well. And they're pretty uh -huh. close to the size of the Walmart ones. So uh, look in the uh, cooking area, the kitchen area of 
uh, Dollar Tree and you will find those cookie sheets. Now, I'm not talking about the aluminum foil molded things that you see. Uh, these are regular reusable cookie sheets. And uh, they work quite well. And the Walmart ones, uh, three for six bucks. You can't beat it. All right. Well, I'm going to borrow to grab one and, and take it to... Uh up to the museum and, and see what everybody thinks. But uh, I, I think we may get uh, get some of those Costco tables you were talking about too. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. But, uh, but that's a, that's a great way to go. Now, I, you know, while we're on the topic here real quickly, I, I looked at these, you know, silicone mats on, on Amazon and, and, and some of those things. Um, obviously the cookie sheets, the, the cheapest way to go, um, if, if you're looking for something better, what, what do you suggest? Well, what I, I would suggest is uh, combining the two, and that is I take those silicon mats, which are magnetic, and most of the cookie sheets are made of a material, uh, if it's not aluminum, uh, um, it will stick to it. And so quite often I will take the... Uh, uh, silicone uh, soldering mat and lay it inside a cookie sheet so you get the best of both worlds there you go well that, that may be a good uh, good way to go too so well those are some some ideas for for soldering surfaces and we've got a couple of more kits we're going to talk about here in just a little bit but we're going to uh Take our break right now and open up the phone lines at 812-638-4261. Again, uh, that's a different phone number than usual. That's our old phone number from way back when, uh, 812-638-4261. Um, that's the number we'll be taking calls on, so we'll open that up and come back with Joe right after this word from ICOM America right here on Ham Talk Live. It's that time of year again. Field Day is from June 26th to 27th, and ICOM has the base station of your dreams with the IC7300 and IC9700 SDR transceivers and the portable SDR transceiver, the IC705. These amateur radios are top of the line and are the choice for DXers and contesters across the globe by helping operators cut through pileups, letting you work the bands and record those contacts. Be a Field Day leader with ICOM. Heard it. It, worked it, logged it. The IC7300 is a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed your expectations. This innovative HF transceiver digitizes RF before various receiver stages to reduce the generated inherent noise in different IF stages. The IC7300 is the radio that changed the way entry-level HF is designed. It has RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and an SD memory card slot. The real HF fun starts here. And you can create your own band opening with the IC9700. This transceiver radio brings direct sampling to the UHF and VHF weak signal world. This all-mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy. A 4.3-inch color touchscreen with real-time spectrum scope and waterfall display, smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels, and dual watch operation and full duplex operation in satellite mode. Expect top performance on field day with ICOM's IC9700. And of course, the IC705 is the perfect transceiver for hams who enjoy both the great indoors and outdoors on field day. It's the perfect QRP companion. This base station has features and functions at the tip of your fingers in a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and weighs in at just under 2 pounds. It has the 4.3 inch color touchscreen with live band scope and waterfall, 5 watts out with the battery, 10 watts with the power supply, does full D star, sideband, CW, AM, and FM modes. It has a micro USB connector, Bluetooth, wireless LAN, and micro SD card slot, integrated GPS, a GPS logger, and the speaker mic comes standard. Perfect accessory for the IC705 is the optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations, a day in the park, or some contesting. 
Visit the IC705 webpage to view accessories and free software available for download. And you can check all that out at icomamerica.com slash amateur. You can find more information on all of ICOM's radios there. Again, it's icomamerica.com slash amateur. Join the conversation. Give us a call at 859-982-7373. Again, the number to call is 859-982-7373. Or, if you'd rather type than talk, tweet us at Ham Talk Live. Now, here's Neil Rapp with more Ham Talk Live. You're listening to Ham Talk Live, the number one podcast amongst the podcasts with the words ham, talk, and live in the title. Here's your host, Neil Rapp. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Thanks to ICOM America for sponsoring the show. Be sure you check them out at icomamerica.com slash amateur and check out Ham Talk Live on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And at hamtalklive.com every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, well, before we get back to Joe and take your questions, we have a couple of things. First of all, that phone number Andy gave is, is, is not the phone number to call tonight. Uh, the phone number to call tonight is 812 812- six three eight four two six one if you want to call in uh, of course you can still tweet us at ham talk live and if you're on spreaker type in the comments uh, but again the phone number for tonight is eight one two six three eight four two six one we had some uh, technical difficulties with the other number and so we'll get that back uh, in service real soon, but, uh, that's how you reach us. And then also before we uh, go back to Joe, we have our weekly segment, the N9 GSU ham radio joke of the week. Now it's time for the ham talk live ham radio joke of the week. The part of the show where Rick tells us a ham radio joke, the ham talk live ham radio joke of the week is brought to you by QRM labs. Now here's Rick Garrett in nine GSU with today's ham talk live joke of the week. I'll be the first to admit not everyone gets my sense of humor. I tried to send a buddy a joke over slow scan TV, but it wasn't well received. This has been the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week with Rick Garrett in 9 GSU. Tune in again next week for another joke from Rick. Oh, that Rick and his slow scan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, it's time for your calls now. So again, if you have a question for Joe, give us a call at 812-638-4261 or tweet us at HamTalkLive or type in the comments on Spreaker. And if you're listening to us on WTWW or on the podcast edition of the show, you won't be able to reach us since uh, we're doing this live on Thursday night. So, um couple of things have come in so let's do those first and then we'll get to a couple of these uh other kits that we're looking at that that, that aren't cw um so if i would hit the right button jacob Lindsay, and i forgot his call it's ke7 something i think or kf7 well anyway Friendly reminder to all the Ham Talk Live listeners that if you bought one of those Xtronic soldering irons um, that Joe talks about, and those are, are also on Amazon, uh, you can register your limited warranty on the Xtronic website. And uh, Jacob says his Xtronic got uh, his Morosino 32 together in no time. So thanks for the suggestion, Joe. Well, thank you. Yeah, the Morserino is a is a fun kit, and there's really only 11 parts that you solder, but there's a lot of pins on some of those parts. But an excellent kit and also a hybrid kit, and it also has an OLED display. So uh, that's kind of a theme lately is these new displays that don't draw as much and give you a lot of flexibility. That's a great kit. 
Well, thanks, Jacob, for writing in. And, and yeah, Joe, we've talked about this extronic soldering iron, <laughs> I think, every time you're on the show. But, uh, again, you know, last Saturday uh, I was with uh, some volunteers up at the Voice of America Museum for working on Yoda Camp, and we put together 30 of those things that – Extronic uh, just donated to the cause, and we put uh, all thirty of them together. All thirty of them worked. All thirty of them were in were in great shape, except for for the one that we forgot to take the the cap off the the tip when we turned it on. And ooh, ooh. And, and, and and yeah, we we we've got the smell of burnt plastic, but but it cleaned up real nice. So we we got it taken care of, but. But yeah, we're like, wait, hmm, hmm, I smell something. It's like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> but they they work great, and uh, you know, digital readout, uh, temperature controlled, and, and it was it was a good thing. So check out Extronic USA. Yeah, and actually, those come from here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, so you've got the. Uh, the hometown connection with Joe K zero N E B there on those, uh, extronics. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Jill KD eight QGA says, if you get blinded with your cookie sheet, take in, uh, on the, uh, lamp or light lamp, uh, go spray paint it in flat black. It's a heck of a lot easier to put kits together without getting blinded. So that, that's, that's Jill's tip on the, on the cookie sheet. Yeah, very good. Yeah, that or, like I said, use the silicon mats that are black or gray or blue. Um, let's see here. Uh, I I do have a few items to talk about. One is is a 3D printed CW key that I've been using a lot when I'm testing these kits. And this was first brought to my attention by Rhea in 2RJ. And uh, she printed the first one up for me and gave me the Thingiverse number for it. And uh, I assembled it at home. And I was amazed that this is a really nice little kit uh, and nice little key that you can put together. And it's great for a group building project. Just pre-print all of the the parts, obviously, because it takes a long time to 3D print. But uh, uh, I discovered that to make a 100 of these things... I can get all the screws and uh, the washer and stuff for it uh, for about, I think it was like $25 to do a hundred of these things. So um, uh, they're very inexpensive to uh, put together. That's like a quarter each in terms of the the hardware, uh, except for uh, I still need to find a spring source. And I did find some audio cables for like 30 something cents each and what i do on those is i cut it in half so you now have two plugs two wires and uh so now you can do two keys on one cable uh so that makes it down to about 18 cents uh per unit for the cost of the cable with the plug already on it so uh a neat very very low cost project that is a group kit build item Now we're going to go the other direction. We're going to go to a kit that's a lot more complex. You're not going to get it done in an afternoon. You're going to spend maybe a couple afternoons putting this together. It's called the FT8 Phaser. And it was designed by K1SWL. And um, the case was designed by AA0ZZ, who always has a, a hand also in some of the cases of the four-state QRP kits along with uh, David Kripe and M0S. Now, this is put out by Midnight Design Solutions, and they are at www.midnightdesignsolutions.com. And the FT8 phaser is also digitally synthesized, but it only has two buttons in front. One says FT8 and the other one says ALT. And the ALT is an alternate frequency. You can have it programmed like I do for FT4 frequency. Some people run PSK31 or Olivia or any of the other sound card modes. You can run with this kit. Once again, it puts out about 5 watts key down of single sideband so you can run any of the sound card modes. And... uh, um, 
once it's all together, it's a nifty looking little box and makes a great demo for portable or things like that. Uh, a great emergency communicator as well. A very solid case that's made out of printed circuit board material. The case does cost extra. I would not build this kit without that case because uh, it's beautiful and uh, makes it a lot more functional. The last one I'm going to talk about is available both in kit form and pre-made. But the thing that they both have in common is you can mess with the programming if you know anything about programming in Arduino. I knew nothing about doing that. And I, I'm, I, I'm sorry to uh, our friend Glenn in Mississippi who teaches that and has been trying to get me to do it. Well, now I'm just starting to do it. And I got to mess with the code of this thing to get rid of some of the uh, headaches that it had, like it tuned backwards. And so I discovered where in the program I could change that. And now it tunes the right way. And now it boots up on my favorite radio station every time I turn it on. Now it receives everything from long wave all the way up through the FM broadcast band. And uh, the FM band, it not only is stereo, but it displays the uh, RDS information, which is your Ooh. station ID, song title, and so forth. And guess what it uses for a display? We have a theme here. We've talked about two other kits, the Morserino 32 and the TR25. Well, this one also has that same one-inch by half-inch OLED screen. So these are up and coming. These are becoming very popular because of their low current draw and they're very easy to read. And it has that kind of screen in it. And so uh, it comes with a little whip antenna. Obviously, that's not going to be really good on shortwave. So you can hook it to an outside antenna. Same thing goes with FM broadcast. And there's a switch on the back that's FM or AM SSB. And all that is is it changes the uh, input filtering and stuff uh, in the preamp uh, for receive from the HF to the VHF uh, circuit. And it has a USB mini, uh, newer ones. Some of them have the micro or have the C type connector. This one still has the mini. Uh, you can plug a stereo headphone into the back. Uh, but like I said, what's fun is you can redefine the band edges and the default frequencies on each band. And you can change the tuning steps and uh, defaults and it has front panel control of those things as well but you can set the defaults and stuff in the program as you load the Arduino uh, it is available with a case or with the case as a kit and uh, as a kit all the surface mount parts are already done for you once again and all you're going to do is a handful of through hole parts like the uh, push buttons and things like that so uh, in kit form, uh, this thing sells for about $38 and, uh, pre-built anywhere from 75 or 80 up to about a hundred dollars, depending on the case and things like that. So how do you find this? Well, you're going to look up SI4732 or SI4735. And that is the number of the IC chip. That's the heart and soul of this thing. Uh, it has an Arduino Nano in it, and I discovered that the Nano is a Chinese clone, and if you boot into it with the normal bootloader, it will not accept it. But if you tell it that you're using the old bootloader, and most of your Arduino uh, program software has that option, uh, you tell it it's the old bootlegger, uh, old bootloader, <laughs> it works. Bootlegger, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it there works. we go. Yeah, the bootloader, uh, the old bootloader works perfectly. And so it's a clone nano in there, but it programs the same way. And uh, it's slick. I have had a ball with this darn little receiver. And you can just set it on the table and on field day and let uh, people listen to what you're doing and things like that. The the bootlegger is another episode of Ham Talk Live. Oh it's yes, <laughs> oh, <definitely. laughs> but I'll tell you what it's it's a very small radio. It has what amounts to a cell phone battery in it, so it recharges from the USB, 
a uh, slick little radio, uh, very yeah, low cost. Like and, and, and RDS, because I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of RDS, and a lot of people have no idea what RDS is, but uh, but that it decodes the RDS. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, and this time of the year when you have band openings like sporadic e-skip in the FM broadcast band or Tropo, it's great because you can see what you're listening to before they ever give an ID. Yep, that's, that's the cool thing about it, so... All, all great stuff, Joe. And uh, let's see if we let me uh, check the uh, messages here and see if we have any more. Um, and let's give a last call for phone calls at 812 638 4261. If you have a question or a comment, uh, now is the time because uh, we're just about done. We're actually uh, already a little over, but just a minute or so. So. Uh, give us a call, 812-638-4261. Uh, don't see any more messages other than than Chris, uh, AA4CB, thank you for listening, and and uh, uh, Bonnie and, and Jill are, are in here talking about uh, figuring out things to do while they're in Huntsville. So I, I know, you know, ham fests are, are on the way back. Uh, I know, uh, the one that, uh, they're planning in Bloomington where I used to live that, which that still seems odd, uh, to say that I used to live there. Uh, they were going to have everybody show their vaccination card to get in. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but these, these ham fests are coming back, Joe. Yeah. And I, I really look forward to it. I, I knew that when the thing started winding down, there would be a kind of a gap between, uh, nothing at all and going full bore. Uh, my schedule will kind of fill up again later this summer. Uh, also, by the way, that, that key I was talking about earlier that you can make a cheap kit out of it. Uh, if you have a 3d printer Look for on Thingiverse, uh, thingiverse.com, uh, for item number 3167343. That's item number 3167343. And that's, uh, this, I think they call that the thing number. And, uh, you can download those files, take them to the library or, or your schools or whatever that have a 3D printer and print the parts. Well, there you go. So that we've got the uh, the paddles and, and all kinds of good stuff. So, Joe, uh, I thank you once again for coming on the show and, and telling us about all this cool new stuff, and, and we'll do it again soon. Yes, and I look forward to seeing you in Huntsville. Absolutely. look Really looking forward to, uh, to getting out on the road uh, for a while. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a good time. All right, well, that is a wrap for this week's episode of Ham Talk Live. Thanks to my guest, Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB, and everybody out there in cyberspace for listening and typing in tonight. And uh, I invite you back next Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, it's the annual Field Day Q&A show uh, where we take your last-minute questions about Field Day and ARRL contest manager Paul Bork, N1SFE, will be here to answer those. So if you have a last-second question about field day, here's your chance to get that rule clarified. That's on June 24th, right here on Ham Talk Live. And for a list of all of our upcoming guests, visit hamtalklive.com. And if you like the show, please leave us a review. This is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying for now, 7375, and may the good DX be yours. Well, you came right back to my CQ call. You read a villainy five and strength nine. You never once mentioned your weather at all And I didn't mention mine We talked and talked for hours and hours I completely forgot you're a ham I don't know your power or the height of your tower Frankly, I don't give a damn So 